What's going on? This is Dylan with Manoa Chocolate. Today we're going to be talking about these whetstone grinders and how to clean them. They're also known as uh, conches. I don't personally like to call them conches because that's just uh, something they do by default. They're a stone grinder. It's very basic. It's a <laughs> rudimentary way of making chocolate, but it's a really good starting tool and we still use it all the time. And so originally they're made for grinding up rice flours and curries. They come out of a place in India. I think pretty much every single model that you buy, there's maybe four different versions, come out of this same town in India. And so this is no different. Coco Town is the ones that we've been using for a long time. I think the first one I got was in 2012. The second one was maybe 2013. And they're still working great. There's nothing wrong with them at all. It's a very basic machine and it does a decent job at making chocolate. So let's go into uh, some of the tools that we need in order to clean this. Because the stones have to come out, we want a tray. And we're gonna put the stones on the tray, that way it contains the chocolate and the mess. Before we remove the stones, you obviously empty your chocolate out. And so what we do is we take a bucket and we put a strainer over it. And the bucket is about the right height so that it can tilt all the way down and you can slowly drain all of the chocolate through the strainer into your bucket. And this will capture anything like radicals or nibs or large sugar pieces that might not have been ground correctly uh, to the micron size that we're shooting for, the target micron size. And that could be maybe because you didn't scrape the sides enough or it got stuck on the shafts. It's very difficult to truly scrape everything so that it all refines evenly. And so this is just the way these machines work. You do your best to scrape it. It's not gonna do as good a job as a, a roller mill or a ball mill. But like I was saying, we used it for years and it does make good chocolate, especially if your beans are decent quality. So now we've got our scraper. This is one of the first tools that you're gonna need after you empty it into your bucket. And it's good to have it's set up close enough that you can control the dial and still be able to reach in safely. Now, it does go here. This is the only scary part of this machine is that it does have this pinch point. And so I'm gonna stand over here and as I turn it on, I can control the speed and the scraper and I can start to collect the chocolate that remains on the sides. So you see? I can then put it into my bowl. So I can get it pretty clean. At this point, it's been eight years. I've got some scraper skills with these things. These are very basic. They're from the hardware store. I used to use them a lot for fixing surfboards. People use them for painting. They're really good and affordable for cleaning out your grinders, scraping bowls clean. It's just a squeegee. But we got this pretty clean. And so now we're going to be taking the stones out. This is a two person job. At one point I rigged up a pulley system so I could do it myself. It's an awkward height that did work. If, uh, if you have another set of hands, that'll make a big difference. So let's take a pause here. I'm gonna have somebody help me take the stones out and we'll take it to the next step. Now that we got this out, one of the first things to do is to make sure you put this back down because it'll have a tendency to get knocked. It hit somebody in the head pretty hard. So we now have the, the habit of always putting that down and making sure that that pin is always in place. Otherwise it will tip. Now the stones are out so it's not as big of a deal, but really good habit, keep that pin in. So now you can see, this is what I was talking about. It's really hard to scrape this part of it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and scrape as much as I can off of here to avoid anything going down our drain as we disassemble this and then wash it off. It's really easy once it's out and we're just gonna take this whole thing apart. It's not very complicated. So now we've got an adjustable wrench. Oh, and the other thing is this rag is really good to try and always keep your hands not too chocolatey because anything you touch will then turn into chocolate. So the cleaner you stay, the cleaner everything else stays. So now I'm just gonna dump a bunch of this alcohol on the wrench. So just clean that guy off. Oh, that was easy. 
That guy comes apart there. There we go. Now our wheels slide right off and it becomes a lot more manageable. At this point, we can scrape it even cleaner before going to the sink. So we're gonna wash this off. We're gonna put it back together. But the last thing to do is actually loosen these little guys. There's these little screws and it's holding the scrapers on. And I like to do them one at a time because they like to fit on one side more than the other for whatever reason. So I'm gonna take one side off first and then we'll, we'll do the other side. And then we'll let everything dry off really well because we don't ever want water being introduced to the chocolates and we don't want it hiding under the, the cracks and crevices. So now we have everything cleaned and drying. We're going to now attend the drum and I just scraped everything out really well. It's kind of like uh, the wheel in pottery. When you turn it on and you just hold it slowly and you can get as much as you can out of this drum because we don't want to waste any chocolate, it's still good. After it's as clean as you can get it with a squeegee or a scraper, we're gonna now dump just hot water in here. And then I also rinsed anything, maybe any soap that was remaining on this brush so that I can use it to scrub. I'm gonna dump the hot water in and then I'm just gonna scrub it clean. You're gonna notice that all the, any residue of chocolate pretty much comes out after that. We then tip it over and wipe the machine off. And then as soon as that's dry, we're ready to load this back up and start over. So that's how you clean a Cocoa Town or any stone grinder. It applies to the small ones the same way it applies to the big ones. Hope this was helpful. See you next time.